Shalom. I'd like to start off by giving all praises, honors, and glories due to Yahweh. Bashim Yahushai, Bashim Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles, elders, and bishops of Great Millstone, who rule and teach well. And also, last but not least, uh, a sincere shalom salutations out there uh, to the hopeful elect, wherever you may be. All right, that's including the, the believers and also you fellow laborers that do this truth. And all sincerely heart to you all, I say shalom. And may the blessing of election be upon you and your household. Now, I want to do a lesson concerning uh, speaking the same mind speaking the same doctrine right <clears throat> and this is not necessarily going into what what's, what's that group uh, HOI with Chief Ephraim I'm not gonna I'm not gonna speak concerning what they're doing because you know <sighs> scripture says you know after the, the, the second rebuke that that man be a uh, let him, be, let him be a heretic, you know? He can't do anything else. But the reason why we do these videos is to pretty much let the sheep know and guide them. Tell them that these things are not supposed to be, right? We do it as a way to warn the sheep that what they're doing is going off, right? And there are many scriptures that talks about this. The first one is 1 Corinthians 1. And it says, verse 10, it says, Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord, Yahweh Shai, that ye all speak the same thing. Okay? And speaking the same thing is concerning the doctrine. The doctrine that you speak has to be uh, in unison. One man can't say, I believe the karagma is the microchip, and then another, in his mind, he believes it to be the white woman or Christianity. Now, these are just d different examples. Okay, that's within Israel, right? That men say these things. And when you guys come together for the sake of a unity camp, okay, uh, it brings, not only does it bring confusion, but it brings contention too as well. Because if that person is passionate about that false doctrine, Stripes will come, uh, stripes, uh, arguments, and scripture says that the Lord is not the author of confusion, and when there is confusion, man, there is evilness, you know, let me get this, the scripture. In every work. This is James 3 verse 16, it says, for where envying and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. Okay, so confusion, okay, is pretty much the building block for envying and strife. When there's confusion within the mist, okay, envy and strife comes. And when strife comes, evil work happens, evil actions, okay? People start putting hands on each other and... It just turns to a big mess. That's why the Lord always uh, preached about speaking the same doctrine. You know, if, if a person is speaking a different doctrine than you, then let that person go and teach, you know, on his own, right? And that there be no divisions among you, okay? Divisions concerning the doctrine, right? But that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. So you want to be joined together in the same mind because we are all members, right, of the house of David, which is the third temple. Now, the people in the land of Israel, uh, you know, who the, the people, the people that claims to be the people, they believe that they're going to build the third temple that was prophesied in the scriptures, but they don't understand because it wasn't given to them, first and foremost, but they don't understand that the third temple is a spiritual thing. It's it's a temple not made with hands, 
right? As it says in 1 Corinthians 6, verse 19. Well, not not, but I think it's in Acts where it says, know that uh, the most I dwell of nine temples made with hands. This time around, the Lord decided to change things up, right? And back then, it was the carnal version. It was actually the physical temple. You can read about that. And, you know, the book of Solomon, when, the, when Solomon built up the temple, the house of the Lord, when King uh, King David wanted to do it, but, you know, it wasn't his lot to do so, right? So he left that, that task to his son, which is Yahweh Shai and, and the spirit, his Lord. Okay, and he built up the temple, the house of the Lord, which is Omenomen because he is pretty much the head of the house, the head of the, uh, the temple. He is the... Uh, the high priest, okay, that stood up in the heavens, okay, the head of the head, if you can understand, okay. Now, after the temple has been destroyed, after we return from Babylonian captivity, when the exiles came back into the land, not all of them, because he had some that stayed in Babylon. You can read about that in, in history. After that was done, you also had people, uh, Nehemiah. Ezra, okay, uh, Zerubbabel, all these different prophets and forefathers, right? They had a hand in building up the walls and building up the temple, okay? So the temple is a very significant thing. But now, in this time period, right, this, the temple is a spiritual building. And every member of the elect is building up that temple okay i'm going to go ahead and get a scripture this is a uh, natural first this is first corinthians 15 verse 46 oh i like that i don't know what version that was but let me look for it This is in the AMP. It says, however, the spiritual, the immortal life is not first, but the physical, the mortal life, and then the spiritual. Okay, so the Lord had the physical come first, which this goes into the body, right? The body being created. The physical part body is the one that gets created, formed in the womb, the flesh. And by the time that you come out the spirit comes down into that that body right this is in the csb but the physical uh the cb but the physical body comes first not the spiritual the spiritual body comes afterwards so the one that was natural was what the temple that was the physical body the physical temple now we are dealing with the spiritual one and you have to be aware of that as a Hebrew Israelite, that's within this truth, within this ministry, to know that not every Israelite, right, is of that temple. You have the house of David and you have the house of Saul, right? As, as it is written, the house of David waxed stronger and stronger, right? And the house of Saul waxed weaker and weaker. So let me go ahead and get that. That's Isaiah 22. Um, I think it's in the book of Samuel. Yep, 2 Samuel 3 verse 1. It says, Now there was a long war between the house of Saul. This was back then, but it says, as it says in the book of Ecclesiastes, uh, there's no new thing under the sun. So everything that happened back then is going to happen again between the house of Saul and the house of David. But David waxed stronger, the house of David, which is the elect. And stronger in the house of Saul, which are the two thirds waxed weaker and weaker. Okay, remember, just because an individual knows that they are an Israelite does not mean they are of the elect. Okay, let me go ahead and get that in the book of Jude, where it talks about spots in your feast. If that was the case, if every individual that was within this ministry that knew who they were. Right, then this wouldn't be written. This is Jude 1, verse 12. 
<clears throat> These are spots in your feast. Whoa, let me let me start that. Verse 10, but these speak evil of those things which they knew not, but what they know naturally as brute beast, because the natural things, though of not the things of the most side, neither can he discern them, right? If they are foolishness unto them. Remember, the natural mind, that's Romans 8, verse 17, the carnal mind is enmity against the heavenly father, okay? Against the spiritual mind. So, you can't have a natural man come and receive the spiritual gifts and riches of Yahweh Shemiah That's why there are so many different doctrines, okay, within this ministry, within what we call the truth. But these speak evil of those things which they know not, but what they know naturally as brute beast. In those things, they corrupt themselves because they have corrupt communication, right? They were not the virgins that were found in Revelation, the fifth chapter, where it says in their mouths were found no guile. No, they were the ones that had guile in their mouths, okay? And they refused to remove that guile after continuous corrections and rebukes. They never, ever, ever, ever decide to change and correct their doctrine, okay? Woe well, unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain, and we know the way of Cain. He was a murderer and a liar and abode not in the truth. You can read about that in John, the eighth chapter. And ran greedily after the heir of Balaam for reward, okay? And perished in the gainsaying of court. These are spots in your feast of charity. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, okay? So you have guys that come into this thing that don't fear Yahweh Shad. That's why it's written in Peter's, all right, that judgment must begin at the house of Mosai. That's not talking about Israelites that don't know who they are. That's talking about Israelites that do, that are aware, that are conscious of who they are. Judgment begins there at first, okay? Remember. When you come into this ministry, okay, you take up a bigger portion of responsibility. You are held to a higher standard, okay? And the more you grow in this ministry, the higher that standard becomes, okay? Now, when you're purposely, intentionally, right, it doesn't matter which if, if it's intentional or not because as it is written, you know, uh, the deceived and the deceiver are his, okay? But there are guys out there that are intentionally doing these things, okay? And they know that their doctrine is false, but they're going to continue preaching it for filthy lucre's sake. What do you think is going to happen to those men, you know? Clouds, they are without water, carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withereth. Ooh, okay? So their reward, their works withereth. It's dead, that means it's not full of life. Why? Because they don't have the Holy Spirit in them from the beginning. Without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. And they're going to be plucked up by the roots very soon. Right? Remember what uh, Yahweh did to that tree that bore no fruit. He cursed it. And that tree withered and died. And same thing shall happen to these men. At least they repent. Raising the waves of the sea, foaming out of their shame. Wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. Okay. And they'll be cast into our darkness and there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Okay. That's what they're going to receive. So let's go from there. I'm going to go back to. <clears throat> what's in the second Corinthians? Let me uh, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Go to Second Corinthians three, uh, thirteen. Excuse me, verse eleven. <clears throat> it says here, finally, brethren, uh, farewell. Be perfect and be of good comfort. This is uh, Apostle Paul's final letter, his final greeting uh, before he got crucified. Right, 
Be of one mind, live in peace, okay? Be of one mind, and the power of love and peace shall be with you, which is who Yahweh Greet one another with an holy kiss, and all the saints salute you, okay? So Apostle Paul, before uh, he left, he wrote this letter telling the church of Corinthians to continue speaking the same thing, you know? That is the, uh, the purpose within this letter, a, a lesson. Continue speaking the same doctrine. Don't deviate. Let me go ahead and get that in the book of Timothy. Yep. This is uh, 2 Timothy 13, verse uh, 3, verse 14. It says, but can continue... Thou and the things which thou hast learned. And what is what are the things that you have learned? It's the doctrine, the breakdowns, the scriptures. Uh, the scripture says we have an unction from the Holy One and we know all things. Now, we know all things concerning what we can know. Because there are things that are hidden, right? That John the Revelator hid, that he seen. And the angel told him not to write these things down. But the, the stuff that we are supposed to know... We have it. Through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashmi Asha, we have obtained it, right? The election has obtained it, but the rest were blinded. But continue down the things which thou hast learned and has been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, right? And who did we learn this, this truth from? Ultimately, it comes from one West, right? Uh, but things happen to one West and the doctrine eventually evolved and became refined and furbished and that doctrine came from the apostles on down the apostles the bishops and then the elders okay knowing of whom thou hast learned them and that from a child has known the holy scriptures so when you come into this ministry you are what a child and as you grow <coughs> you begin to age <coughs> okay Within this 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 ministry, this uh congregation, for lack of a better word, right? And you begin to gain wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. Okay. So these things make us wise. We have now been made wise through what? Through this doctrine, okay? Right? The Lord gave us the eye cell. That thou mayest see. That's in Revelation. Uh, Revelation, the uh, if it, I believe it's the seventeenth chapter. Uh, let me go to it. The Spirit told me to go to it. Revelation. Yep, Revelation three, verse seventeen. Verse 18. It says here. So many versions. Let me let me let me read the GNT. It says, I advise you then to buy gold from me, pure gold, in order to be rich. And what are the pure golds or what what are the true riches? The riches that cannot be stolen, that where no moth nor rust does corrupt right these are the treasures that are, are are stored in heaven which is our our works buy also white clothing to dress yourself right and we take on that white clothing as a sense of purity meaning that what we have been given a clean slate right just like that white stone that's given to you that represents what purity now Right, the scripture says, "Blesses the man who his sins, who the Lord has not imparted iniquity unto him." Okay, so when you have that white dress, that means you are pure in the eyes of Yahweh Hashem Hashai. And cover up your shameful nakedness. Our shameful nakedness is our past sins, and sometimes even the sins that we commit in this life. Okay, because it is a shameful thing. But once we come into this this fold, Yahweh Shai has covered all those past iniquities up, if you believe in him. Buy also some anointment 
to put on your eyes. What is that anointment? It's the Holy Spirit. Okay, and it's the spiritual eyes, the mind. Because, you know, there's a there's a thing that's that, that they say in the world is called the third eye. And the third eye is your mind. The Lord, he opens up that third eye, right, which they say is the pineal gland or the pineal gland. And that allows you to see past the physical world and into the spiritual world. The spiritual things that are within these scriptures, they start to make sense to you, okay, because they open up and they make sense to you. Buy also some anointment to put on your eyes so that you may see, okay? And that's the reason why we are able to go in these scriptures and break so many things down perfectly. Why? Because through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Yahshai, we have been given the eye self to see, okay? Which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, Right? which is in Yahweh Shai HaMashiach. I'm going to continue reading down to verse 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of the Most High, right? When men write these things, they are moved by the Holy Spirit, okay? And it is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction. When someone goes off, we are instructed to correct them for instruction in righteousness because these these words that are within this book from the old all the way to the new and including the Apocrypha, they are instructions of righteousness that the man of the Most High, right, if you claim to be a man of the Lord, what may be perfect. And it's through this we're going to obtain perfection. Thoroughly furnished. Why are we going to be thoroughly furnished? Because we have went through the trials that have made us refined. And the Lord has cast off those old works. Thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So it's very, very important. Or as they say, uh, uh, Solomon. It's very Solomon that you uh, continue to speak the same thing. Speak the same doctrine and continue in these things. Because this is what's going to lead to everlasting life. Hopefully this lesson was edifying to you all out there. You brothers and sisters. I'm going to give all praises, honors, and glories due to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Rakab, Badash. Double honors to the apostles, elders, and bishops of Great Millstone. And peace, blessings, and salutations out there to the elect. The elect, the elect, the house of David, the house of the faith, wherever you may be, to all say Shalom. Lord willing, until next time, Shalom.